ex-teachers slash professors of Reddit, what was your f*** this moment? I had a student that copied off another kid during a test. I gave him a 0%. The parents came in to complain to administration that, since I hadn't explicitly said during the first day orientation that cheating wasn't allowed, it was an unfair punishment. Administration forced me to allow him an opportunity to retake the test. He never retook the test, and the grade of zero stood. Still, I was so disillusioned by the entire experience that I started looking the next day at college programs that I could use to transition away from public education. Proof that some that go into administration are wholly unfit. Like it has to be explained that cheating is bad. Oh and by the way children, no murdering, no selling drugs in the classroom, no driving your motorcycle in the hallway, don't burn the school down, don't punch the principal in the face. For sakes, this is why warning labels exist to not iron your clothes while you are wearing them I guess. Two weeks into my first year teaching ninth grade math I had a girl attack another girl for no reason in my class. She was grabbing onto her hair really tightly and I was trying to break it up. Another student tried to help me out and somehow the instigating student managed to punch him in the face and give him a bloody nose while still holding onto the other student's hair. Now what makes this story relevant is I literally said the words FCK this while trying to break up the fight. Not loud, not to a student, but just like FCK this this I'm not gonna let this happen in my class right now. Well. The instigating student decided to tell the principal that I was cursing at her. Despite the other students in the class supporting me and the fact that this student had a history of violence, I got a letter in my permanent file saying I had used inappropriate language towards a student. FCK that. Teaching taught me a lot but I couldn't do it for more than a couple years. Really respect those that make it their career. End of year assessing students to see who'd progress through to the second year, while assessing the work the department head came in and said we had to fail X amount due to facilities and resources for the next year. He then returned an hour later and said that due to the budget we actually needed to pass a higher number than originally thought. I completely ignored what he'd said and carried on marking on merit but it was the proverbial straw. Edit, this was a UK university a few years ago. The system has been really messed up in recent years. I failed a college student who never came to class and missed both the midterm and final exams. The influential parents complained to the school. The administration later went into the digital records, and changed the fail to a passing grade without my knowledge. I found it out later, third hand. Ergo, I refused to sign a second year contract they offered to me. Caught a student cheating. But, stupid cheating, cheated off of someone else with the wrong answers and the same wrong spelling. When I spoke to him regarding taking a new test, generous on my part considering it should have been a zero per school policy, he refused and said I would be hearing from his parents. I, of course, did hear from them via my principal within an hour. Gotta love kids and their phones readily available. Fast forward to a meeting with the student, parents, and principal. I had his test and the one from which he cheated. Upon showing this to the parents I fully expected them to understand and hold their son accountable. Nope. Instead, the parents demanded an apology from me for branding their son a cheater which would negatively impact him for the rest of his life, and also, it's the least I could do since they were paying my salary. When I said I would not apologize for catching their son cheating the father then said I was lucky I was a woman because otherwise he would punch me in the face. Nice. So, yeah, good times, glad I got my master's degree for that. Edit, holy moly. Came back on just to lurk like I normally do, and I didn't expect this. Okay, so, admin ended the meeting at that moment, shouldn't have gotten that far. I think can't remember this was over 10 years ago now, the student was taken out of my class. Everyone wins, rolling eyes face, new admin these days, super supportive of everyone. Holds teachers, parents, students, custodians, cafeteria workers and everyone in between responsible. Parents still get a little crazy, but as a staff, we feel very much supported. Also, 
for the record, I do love my job, comes with its insane stories like they all do, right? The principal's niece made a B in my freshman geography class and she wanted me to bump it to an A because the child could not get into Texas A&M with a B in a freshman class on her record. This school also pressured teachers to fail no students. I was a high school teacher with 7 years experience in my district and a master's degree. I was making $49,000, this was 2013. I was talking to a friend who was in from out of town. This friend had barely made it through his bachelor's degree, even with a lot of help from him and other friends. Over dinner he was complaining about not getting a good enough phrase, so he was only making $143,000 at his software consulting job, he didn't do the technical stuff, more customer relations. I left teaching to make more money. I am, but it has taken a while, and I really miss working with the kids. Wish I had stayed in teaching. Edit, to be clear, I don't begrudge my friend a penny. Good for people who do well. Edit, a letter. Parents yelling at me for accusing their little prince of acting out and getting zero support from administration. John Mulaney had a great joke about that. One thing that's changed since I was growing up is parents believing their children over adults and teachers. My parents would believe literally any adult over me. A homeless man could drag me to my house and tell my mom, your son just bit my DCK. And my mom would only say, Jonathan, why did you bite this nice man's DCK? Meanwhile I would be standing there like, UHHH doesn't anyone want to know why I bit his DCK? Doesn't anyone care about why his DCK was so close to my chompers? Kid poured gasoline under the door of my room, after hours, and lit it, burning most of the room. The facility guys worked all weekend to clean it up and paint it, hauling in new desks to replace those burned. Not long after that, I found out I could make more money with less hassle by waiting tables at the bitch. Plus the bitch has women in bikinis. I was gone a week later. Going through my FCK this moment right now. Been in special education since 2007, district I work in desperately wants teachers to start new classrooms due to overcrowding yet they don't want to hire the right people, they'd rather hire fellow locals from high school and the area who the admins know versus hiring qualified people from the outside. Our special education admin has zero spec ed experience and his replacement also has no spec ed experience. Not fun at all. I had a religion teacher in high school named Mr. Wynn, who was working on becoming a Jesuit priest and was a really cool guy. There was a kid in my class who was an annoying smart ass, but Mr. Wynn was always really patient with him, until one day he pushed him too far. I forgot exactly what the kid said but it definitely crossed the line. Mr. Wynn slammed his fists on his desk and shouted, why can't you ever shut the FCK up? He then picked up his stapler and chucked it at the kid, missing his head by a few inches and leaving a huge dent in the wall and then stormed out into the hallway. There was another religion teacher down the hall who heard the commotion and talked to Mr. Wynn in the hall for a while to calm him down. He didn't give up on teaching, but it was a pretty extreme FCK this moment I witnessed. Mine wasn't so much a bad f**k this moment. I used to teach developmentally delayed kids and it was awesome. The one moment that sticks out the most was when we were doing a lesson on dinosaurs, I don't remember exactly what it was about but that doesn't matter. Anyway the kids were having a blast pretending to be dinosaurs so we just said FCK the lesson and had dinosaur day. Pretty much the whole day was spent acting like dinosaurs and doing dinosaur-y things. My mom retired as a special education teacher after a student bit her hard enough to draw blood. She had to get a ton of tests for everything from hepatitis to freaking rabies. She was fine, thankfully, but that was when she decided that she'd had enough. She went on to sub for non-special ed kids and eventually, to do administrative work at a charity for ASD individuals. I feel for your mom. I worked at Target as one of their renter cops and got bit by someone we were restraining. It broke the skin, they sent me to the doctors and had to get a litany of tests. It's not fun. So I was a TA for a college course, Introduction to Information Assurance. 
One of the labs for the class involved performing a SQL injection. If you don't know what that means, just know that you have to build your input string carefully, the attack required a very specific input. Well this one student was getting frustrated and asked for some help. After looking at his input string, I realized he had it just right, except he was missing a terminator on part of the input, semicolons, am I right? I pointed out the simple mistake and he didn't take it well. He smashed his own face on the keyboard, logged off the machine, thanked me, and left the class. I knew this level of teaching wasn't for me, I don't know what he's been up to, but I can't imagine a co-worker responding to bugs like that. Was substituting at a low income middle school for the day. About 40 students per class. Just had a simple worksheet for them to work on every hour rotation. Spent the day breaking up fist fights, chairs or desks being thrown across the room, students having screaming matches, students climbing and dancing on desks, students just leaving class during the chaos. I had six students turn in the completed worksheet for an entire day of class rotations. I realized I was no longer a teacher but a prison guard with less benefits and no way to defend myself. I guarantee 80% of these kids will end up dead or in prison before the age of 25. Never again. When the principal told me one of my students mother was getting her secondary education certification so she could move up to teach HS math, where her son was, so they wouldn't be renewing my contract to teach the following year, but, they were in need of a network administrator for the school district, and they were willing to pay me a teacher's 25k salary to do it, and I would be answering to each building principal, like a janitor, not to the superintendent, like a district level admin. Told this story a hundred times already, but it was the time I was breaking up a fight between a 12 year old boy and girl and the boy turned around and punched my in the nuts as hard as he could. The school administrators did nothing, his mom was in the room with him, she did nothing, the general feeling was, this kid's mom pays tuition, deal with it. I dealt with it by leaving the school, opening my own private school, and taking half the students with me. When the prestigious high school I was working at focused on sports more than academics. On top of that, it turned out that the principal overrode teachers marks if they tried giving students a failing grade. F*** that. I have two. Early in my career, I had students who were plagiarizing lab reports. I turned them in, mostly because I felt I had to, the school made a huge jeffking deal about cheating and had an academic honesty pledge statement students wrote on every test. One set of parents screamed at me over the phone. Next thing I know, I had a meeting with the vice principal who said they didn't want the cheating to interfere with the student's future and he ripped up all the plagiarism reports I wrote that year. My second time saying FCK this was based on the cumulative effects of being unsupported by the school. They changed which courses I was teaching, and the grade level. We had a construction project going on so there was constant noise, including beeping and drilling even when they promised it wouldn't be during the school day, that was a lie. Stupid school-wide initiatives. More pointless meetings. Incompetent high-ups. It's the adults in the system that make it hard to be a teacher. The kids are generally not the problem. Not sure if this qualifies but I was an English teacher in China. I taught kindergarten and the little emperor syndrome really is a thing. The little boys in the class were total shits and the regular classroom teachers gave exactly zero fcks in restraining them, though I saw a little girl get slapped for acting up. My breaking point was when I was in front of the class teaching and one little boy was running around in a circle right in front of me. I was ignoring him, but then he started slapping me really hard in the legs every time he went past me. On about the sixth circle, he wound up his arm to slap me and I just nailed him full on two handed shove. The kid went flying. Skidded across the floor looking pretty stunned, though didn't cry. Then the teachers took it upon themselves to come over and give him shit, make him apologize and sit back down. At that point I figured I'm literally assaulting six year olds, probably best that I get out of this country. I left with three months still on my contract. No ragrits. I was an adjunct 
at the bottom of the totem pole, and got my class assignments last and only if the more senior people, everyone, had gotten their minimum number of classes. They'd hold off on this until the literal last minute, and I'd find out if I was teaching three days before the semester started. For the last two or three years, I was only teaching online and only in the summer. During that time I moved away and started a business, so it was all fine with me. The last summer, I got two classes I'd never taught before with about a month before they started. I had to learn a totally new subject for one, and remember stuff I hadn't looked at since grad school for the other. They almost took one class away from me after I'd busted my ass to prepare for it, because nobody else's classes were filling up. The other class had six people in it. I was told I could teach it prorated, for 6 slash 11 THS of the usual rate, and I refused. I didn't have time to learn that stuff, teach two classes, and keep my business going. My wife got contacted about applying for a job out of state. I encouraged her to do so. My thoughts were I have a year and a half of teaching experience and a master's degree in teaching from an R1 research institution, this will be easy. It was not easy. I was told I could not teach in the subject that I was fully certified and held a degree in my current state, despite reading stories about shortages and emergency certifications in my field, but I could probably make it work in another field if I took six to seven classes. I now work another job that I don't really like, though I can get those six to seven classes for mostly free if I want them. The problem is starting over as a teacher, again, would be a decent sized pay cut, and trying to convince myself to deal with the overall low societal respect for teachers is tough when the whole process has just exacerbated my depression for three years. When I found kids labeled proficient were actually 1, 2, or 3 years behind. Advanced included average kids. Parents are not told the truth about student performance levels. This, in a US premier school system. Mine wasn't so much a bad f**k this moment. I used to teach developmentally delayed kids and it was awesome. The one moment that sticks out the most was when we were doing a lesson on dinosaurs, I don't remember exactly what it was about but that doesn't matter. Anyway the kids were having a blast pretending to be dinosaurs so we just said f**k the lesson and had dinosaur day. Pretty much the whole day was spent acting like dinosaurs and doing dinosaur-y things. I worked at an elementary school as a paraprofessional. We had a nine-year-old psychopath. The day he was kicked out slash pulled out by mom was the best day of that year. The whole year in general esked. We had 13 kids and only two head teachers, plus two paras, including myself. We had that psycho kid to deal with as well as several other highly behavioral kids. We had one of the head teachers leave on maternity and leave no plans. The other para quit unexpectedly. I was so stressed that I was losing weight and my hair. I was experiencing other health problems with my monthly cycle to the point that I almost passed out due to blood loss one month. When my husband's grandmother died, I was given grief about asking for a day off for her funeral. We hired another para three months after the first one left, we had subs filling in, and she was just awful. Everything that went wrong I was blamed for. A kid threw a book at my back and caused a bruise on my spine. By the end of April I turned in my two week notice. I felt no guilt. A girl hopped on my computer and erased the attendance for the day for whatever reason. When I wrote her a referral, she started stalking me around the room, crazy eyed, making fists, ready to punch me. Even the other students in the class were scared she was about to jump me. I called security. Found out later that the girl, who was quite large and could probably cause some serious damage, was on heroin and other drugs. Administration didn't think that I needed to know. I had a senior finish the semester with a 40-something average and about 60% attendance. He was going to fail his senior year. On the day I was to submit grades administration came to me with the student and asked what he can do to pass. I said take the class again. Well that was the wrong answer apparently. I was forced to give him a few makeup assignments and a 70 to pass. He was such a troublemaker they just wanted him out. Found out three other teachers had similar experiences with this student. 
I realized I hated 99% of my co-workers and disagreed with virtually every new initiative we were supposed to implement. Liked my time in the classroom with the students, but there's a lot more to teaching than that. Not a teacher, but lamenting what I saw my professors go through. I have a bachelor's degree in craft and material studies. My goal had always been to attend graduate school and begin teaching in college afterwards, I'd say it's a sort of passion I found as an undergrad to teach people how to work with clay, but shortly after graduation, most of my professors started dropping like flies, absolutely fed up with how the college was treating them, one teacher was promised a promotion, later it was given to another teacher that had richer friends, another teacher was given grief over her maternity leave, etc. Most were working multiple jobs to make ends meet, still had their own student loans to worry about, and were simply being treated like crap, and this was slash is the top public art school in the country, treating their teachers this way? I don't know what I want to do with my life anymore because of seeing their struggles, it almost doesn't seem worth it, even with the passion I have. Now even more so after reading everyone's comments here. Most of my professors went above and beyond what was required of them, they were influential to who I am as an artist and person and this was for many students, not just me, yet they are treated so poorly, it's just not right. Every term I have that moment just before finals. Up to about 5 students per term will come into my office and act all surprised that they're failing my class. They tell me they're graduating this term and I have to let them make up all the work they missed. I tell them no, then they freak out. But I need to graduate. I have a job lined up and everything, then in was a bold fking move to miss half of the assignments, hardly come to class, and never ask for help despite failing every test. My mom used to be an English teacher. One of her co-workers caught a couple of teens smoking in the bathroom. They beat up the teacher. He quit and my mom decided to resign at the end of the year. The teacher that was beaten up is fine. He's a florist now, he provided the flowers for my wedding. I taught elementary school for seven years. I definitely had those moments every year. Not one defining I'm out moment, but many small ones that piled up and made it too stressful to picture doing for 30 more years, even though I enjoyed part of the job and I was good at it. The main reason was that I was ill prepared to support kids with trauma and didn't get any real support while they were in my class. 